Hey everybody, welcome to Obscurities and Miniatures. It's Monday, which means it's time once more for our weekly painting progress. And what progress we made this week. We finished up a random 15 millimeter little demon guy. I mean, little is an understatement. He's kind of big, actually, for a 15 millimeter guy. I have no idea where he came from or what line he's from. I found him in a bag with some other completely unrelated looking models ages ago. Here's an average 15 millimeter guy. Can I do a better job of getting him into focus? Let's see. Sorta of, kinda. Reminds me of something from Doom. Why he's in green then, I don't know, but he's painted. Moving on. Continuing to work on the Victorias for third edition Malifaux, another of the Ronin. A nice, rather plain, for lack of better vocabulary. Uh, I still wasn't a big fan of the original Ronin, who just looked like cosplaying Halloween get up. Yeah. So she's done. Very much more frontiersy. Uh, great addition to any kind of Shadows of Brimstone collection. But then again, you could say that about almost all of the outcasts for Malifaux. Let's see what else we got this week. A random dwarf from Titan Forge's Patreon that I printed quite some time ago and finally just got around to painting him. Came out okay. He wasn't the bright best print job so we may do it what we had he's finished at least let's see what else we got oh here's something totally random a random what are these guys algorans from gates of antares i didn't know i had any plastic algorin or is it our isaurian no isaurians are the the guys with the weird like bio organic armor i think it's an algorin looks like an algorin Anyway, I was playing around with painting yellow stuff, which you'll see soon enough what I was up to. And I figured, hey, why not try something yellow? I don't like painting yellow usually, and it's not like a bright, bright yellow or true yellow. So, hey, what the heck? Came out okay. Actually, it makes me curious to see if I have any more of those Algorin plastics so that I can continue the trend there. All right. Let's see what else. Ah. Uh, the reason for the yellow was we got back to painting, or trying to paint, Dark Age Irish from War Games Atlantic. I did not do the greatest job, and I need to put some grass on their bases because it's kind of plain and boring looking, but it's another one down. I'm listening to the ambulance drive by and the dog next door singing along with it. I did a terrible job on his eyes. It looks like he's got cataracts or something. And he's finished as well. And I'll be honest, I have a horrible time trying to figure out what to do with their shields. I'm not sure what he's doing with his face or with his arms. He's looking at something in the sky. Good enough. I'm not liking this. I tried a different flesh tone, and it's just not doing much for me. I don't know how many coats I put on this, and it just does not really go the way I want it to. Is he holding his shield correctly? Beats me. Do I want to put elaborate details on it? Not really. And finally we got a sling user as well. I wish there were more slings. Honestly and truly, I do wish there were more slings on the sprue. You don't get a whole lot. I think I've almost finished at least one frame. Got our guy from Last week, he can hang out with him now. And I still have a few more that are actually on the painting table waiting to get finished. All right. Let's continue our trips through obscurities. A random Warcaster model. This is from Privateer's New Game. I figured since they've got a Kickstarter campaign currently going, and I'm just going to put the link down below for it, because I always put... I don't know if anybody ever checks. I actually put the links to just about every single thing I talk about. If you've never bothered to check uh, anything I show, especially on these Monday painting progress videos, I will show you where you can find it. So anyway, this was a limited edition one. She was during the lock and load, I believe, because the actual model is helmeted. And I did not do a good job right there. I gotta clean that up. 
So she's one of the Marcher worlds, I believe. Marcher, Marcher, I don't know. I can't remember. But I could not remember how they were supposed to be painted. And I went kind of wild with the highlights. And they're kind of glaringly obvious now. So I'm going to have to fix that up. But I kind of like their tans. They're actually supposed to be tan and brown. Very desert scheme, which I thought was kind of cool. All right. And a random animatactics guy who ended up getting painted up like one of the shoe from the Three Kingdoms games. I think it was shoe. No? Wu? I don't know. I'm like drawing blanks now. My gosh. It was based on one of the Three Kingdoms guys. I know I was aiming for somebody in particular and my mind just went totally blank. Okay, what else we got? Uh, I think I showed him off earlier in the week. I tried painting up a, a Scarl for Conquest. Really simple paint scheme, but it worked out really well, and I really dig this guy. Really cool. But he's just, he is a man among men standing with, it's its like a teacher and kindergartners. Come along, children. Yeah, he's just going to wade knee deep. Literally, they're like barely up to his waist. Waist deep, I guess, would be the appropriate area he would be wading to. But honestly, a really cool kit. Okay, what else we got? A Legends of Signa model. Now, this is actually from their resin line, and I didn't do a good job on the pattern on her cloak. I gotta fix it up. I'm not happy with it. Let's try to do something different there, but very colorful model. I didn't do it justice, but it is a cool little fox. I have not seen any of their Fox Kitsune guys available on their uh, Patreon page. I don't know if you guys actually know it, but they do have a Patreon page now. And I should have some of the models to show off later this week because I am in the process of gluing them. Well, when I'm not filming this. But it's been pretty cool. i got to say, I, it's been an interesting experience seeing what they've got available versus, you know, what they've already put out. It's a bit of both. And there is definitely new models. They also have a new Kickstarter coming out. And we will definitely be checking that out. Where did the light go? There we go. All right, moving on. We've got one of the Gomic Barbarians. I think he turned out okay. Trying to do it in very traditional Chaos Marauder colors. And I forgot to go back and fix those. Oh, well. He's a big guy, too. Well... Anything's going to be big compared to the Dark Age Irish. Let's see, grabbing an Artisan Guild human. See, he's not that big then. I think they're more scaled for 28, 32 millimeter size games. And then I also painted up the Peasant Hero for Kingdom Death. And I'm not super pleased with the blood effects. It kind of... I wanted it much brighter... And the eyes look kind of goofy. I probably need to go back and fix those. I dig the face. Dig the pose. Uh, man, that... That's the last time I used that flesh tone. I think everything else turned out okay. Yeah, I probably should go back and touch that up. I'm not happy with the results. And I like the model, too. She's pretty big. Especially when compared to other Kingdom Death models, if I can get her in focus there. All right, is that it? No, it's not, but you know what? The reason I've got such a huge pile of stuff is because my brother earlier in the week, literally like Monday or Tuesday, he's like, hey, guess what? I already got that stuff you gave me painted. And I'm like, no way. So yeah, he actually went ahead and got those Fukimasa, I believe was the name, battle droid, military droids from Papsicles. Totally finished. Let's see if I can just clear you out of the way for a moment. And I gotta say, I really like this paint job so much so I went out and double checked to make sure if I had the same base coat that he's using for the mech. I really like that. I guess he printed these bases at home himself on his FDM printer. But they came out really good. And like I said in the actual video, I think they're very scale agnostic. You could totally get away with using these things as, you know, 15 millimeter support mechs. I could totally envision a pilot sitting inside there in the torso. But they also work great in 15, or not 15, 28, 25, 32, whatever millimeter 
big size gaming you want to call it, uh, I think they'll fit in pretty good. And actually, I'm thinking this base coat that he used would make a really good base coat for the Marcher Worlds as well. So here is one with the assault rifle. Here is the Gatling gun. Gotta have the racing stripes, right? A very anime-esque paint job. I really dig it. I was totally impressed. I'm like, crap, I gotta finish painting my stuff. And then finally we have the advancing one. And I know I'm sure I will be printing the rocket launcher ones up for him as well. Very cool models. This fire team. But he wasn't actually finished with that. He also went ahead and painted up, whee, come on, there you go, the security agent. I like the glasses. Quick and easy, and then my favorite of the bunch, as much as I like those mechs, I like this guy even more. This was also from Papsicles, this was his MMA cyber fighter, but if you are familiar with your old school anime. It is absolutely painted up like a boomer from Bubblegum Crisis. And he is just as big, if not bigger, than those mechs. So I saw the, all this stuff he painted up, and yeah, so that kicked me into overdrive to get my pile of half painted stuff finished up. But then I thought, you know what? I gotta one up him, right? I gotta one up him. I mean, it's my channel, so kind of a host would I be if I didn't do more? So we went ahead and got the Nothic Berserk Behemoth. I'm not getting that. Ah, Nothic Behemoth from Mini Monster Mayhem. All painted up. Painted all those stupid fingernails. Tried to get every little gap in there done. It was... It was fun, but it was also frustrating. Let me explain. Um, if you are going to attempt to paint something big like this, may I suggest you do not glue it to the base prior to actually starting to paint it. I would absolutely, if I could go back, I would have painted that base and then glued them on and painted the underbelly probably while I was at it. And then one that I was particularly happy with this week, because again, not to be outdone by his much nicer efforts there, we went ahead and got the Blood Hunter Beast finished up from Comet Lord Miniatures. And it seems like every time... I tried playing around with the contrast paints, actually, to get this guy done. He is almost entirely in contrast. So every now and then you'll see a spot where obviously the paint did not want to congeal or on the tips of his horns, which drives me nuts. But overall, I'm pretty happy with it. Obviously, I need to go back and finish it up. And I did a terrible job. Look at that. Oh, that's bad on the bottom. We'll just ignore that, right? Eh, he sits level. It's okay. But, man, this is this is the regular-sized version as well. There is an epic-sized version that's on an even larger base. And he barely fits on this one as it is. So I'm quite happy to have him done. I think it's time for me to figure out what my next big crazy model will be and if you guys would like to have some say in what kind of crazy stuff i'm going to paint if you want to just basically dictate what colors and what i'm going to end up doing um by all means check out our patreon page because that is one of the options we have available for you guys and it will help also support our channel and make sure we get even more obscurities on here and finally can upgrade our equipment to something other than my phone on a cheap crappy stand so yeah Hopefully everybody out there is staying safe. Hopefully everybody out there is getting their goodies painted. And hopefully everybody out there will be back and see us later. With that said, this has been High Lord Tamberlane with Obscurities and Miniatures. Saying thanks for watching. And we'll see you back here soon. Bye-bye.